Hey everybody, it's Christina Holloway here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about some habits you can start now to help you with your career growth and development as you prepare for the new year. Real quick, if you enjoy this content and want to learn more about how to make power moves in your career, make sure to follow my channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video from me. All right, so let's get started. Number one, figure out how your personality relates to those around you. I have a client who is terrific and it's clear from the first time I talk to her that she's bold, energetic, ambitious, and not afraid to speak her mind. She's great. Now, she also explained to me that she struggles with understanding her boss and she needs to work on that relationship so she so he can advocate for her promotion. And one time she explained to me that she just couldn't understand his behavior and they went to an event and he sat in the corner. He was nervous. He was resistant to meeting new people. So I asked her if he was an introvert and she said, uh, yeah, he's said that before. So you can guess what I'm going to say here. Her bold, expansive demeanor had him withdrawing from her. He pulled away every time she came at him big. <laughs> if you're struggling with connecting to people at work or you just want a fresh start with the way you show up every day, consider taking a personality assessment. This will do two things for you. It will help you understand your strengths and your personality profile, the things about you that really don't change but they do evolve. Then you'll also get an understanding of the people around you. Start looking for personality characteristics that are on different ends of the spectrum and take time to consider how you can dial your selfness up or down depending on the person and the situation. There are tons of personality assessments out there. It is big business. I would suggest going with something cost effective like the Myers-Briggs or the Gallup Strengths Finder. The trick to accuracy is to answer the questions quickly while you're in a relaxed environment. I also like the BOCI profile for entrepreneurs and Sally Hogshead's Fascination Advantage Report. I've taken them all. <laughs> now, if you want to invest in an assessment and a debrief, you can look into more detailed reports like the Berkman Behavioral Assessment or the Hogan Personality Assessment. For these assessments, you'll need a certified assessment coach to debrief you on them. It'll cost more, but it will be very in-depth. So I am a certified Hogan coach and I can debrief on that assessment. I use this assessment with all of my clients. Let me know in the comments below if you'd be interested in a personality assessment debrief with me and I'll see if I can put together a giveaway for free Hogan assessment and debrief. That might be fun. <laughs> Famous last words. <laughs> Number two, create a roadmap and refer to it regularly. This doesn't need to be complicated. You're only creating a yearly roadmap, not five years or seven years. If you want to build new habits or start the new year trying something new, then just start with the 12 months in front of you and break that up into four quarters. How do you want to show up differently than you did this year? Come up with three to five things for the whole year, nothing big. And then look at your roadmap as four 90 day sprints. Do you see where we're breaking all of this down? So. For example, if one of your goals is better time management, then you have a year to work on it. Ask yourself, why is it important to work on time management this year? Well, maybe it's an area in your career development that you need to strengthen if you're going to be promoted next year. Terrific. A 90 day sprint would allow you to look at the deliverables you have right now and maybe start sorting them into three categories, simple, intermediate, and complex. For the complex ones, admit that you need to ask for help and start figuring out how to collaborate to get things done. We know that you're going to get the simple stuff done quickly. So at the end of your 90 day sprint, you want to have accomplished or started one complex and one intermediate task using your collaboration approach to get started. That's your goal and that's how you make progress. Number three, Decide where you want to focus your learning. Similar to my previous example, if you're working towards a promotion or even an important certification for your industry, take the time to understand where you want to focus your learning and development for the year. If this certification is time consuming and intense, then figure out how you're going to carve out time and resources to do the pre-work and studying to accomplish that task. If you're working on a promotion, your roadmap should include specific training or leadership development programs that will help you build your skills in that area. Allow yourself a training budget. You should have a personal one that includes books, workshops, webinars, or any online programs that interest you. And then you should take advantage of any training budget you get at work. Sometimes 
You're limited to what the company offers for training, but sometimes you can ask for reimbursement if the training is directly related to your work. Now, many companies don't offer training and development budgets for their employees, but that shouldn't stop you from investing in yourself, you know, within reason. Develop a budget for yourself and decide which programs would be worth your effort to explore. There are tons and tons of online programs that are available at a reasonable cost and they're very helpful. I take online programs all the time and I've even offered online programs over the years. Decide where you want to focus your learning and then invest in yourself. Number four, be brave and make the ask. At work, this is about having difficult conversations, but not just any difficult conversation. This is about making the ask for yourself. Advocate for yourself. Again, it doesn't need to be complicated. During one of your 90 day sprints, make it a point to have a career development conversation with your boss or a stakeholder. Again, you're taking your career development in your own hands. Do you have any feedback on that last project we just finished? What did you think about my presentation to the leadership team? Where else could I be contributing as I work with these new stakeholders? What am I missing? If you're not used to asking these types of questions, then this is a big habit that you can implement with powerful results. Again, two things are going to happen here. One, you're going to develop an ability to ask for specific feedback that works best for you. And two, you're going to come across to other people as engaged, confident, and proactive. On a final note, these are just four examples of new habits to try. And if it sounds overwhelming, just pick one thing to try first. Start with a roadmap and then see if you can add any of the other elements as you go. Continue revising your roadmap throughout the year. You're really just trying to build one or two new habits that will stick with you as you grow and learn. All right, so that's it for my video on four habits to build in the new year that will help you grow and develop your career. If you have examples of new habits you've implemented this year with success, leave a comment below. I'd love to hear about it. So I'm really excited for where 2024 is going to take us. Thank you again for being part of my YouTube journey. On a final note, this is it for my videos until January. I'll be spending the end of the year with family and friends and the Augie celebrating the holidays. I hope you'll have a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays filled with peace and joy, and a Happy New Year. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the new year. Bye.